another video on Andrew Broussard watercolors. This one should be a pretty quick one. It's not going to be a watercolor painting. It's going to um, just be looking at a section from a book from the 1920s. This is a compilation, I think, of all his different books. This is um, Bridgman and uh, just a section on drawing the head. Um, what I have here is just my Noodler's Charlie pen. I have it filled with um, Noodler's Heart of Darkness. My friend gave me a nib that is cracked at the base, a vintage nib, and I want to just um, toss that in and try it for this one. So I figured I'd show you all how easy it should be just to switch the nib out on one of these. These pens are uh, friction fitted, so if there's kind of a um, good curvature and similar size, you could swap them over. So it's just a vintage uh, Waterman nib. It has a crack in it about up to here, so that's why he had to give it to me. And um, I might try putting it in one of my Waterman pens, but I just wanted to try and show you all how easy it was to switch it over. This nib is really good. This is the original uh, Noodler's nib. It has about, it has quite a few hours of drawing underneath it, and that smoothed out that nib considerably. So, um, that was easy. Just wanted to swap that over and try it out. Anyway, um, it's pretty early in the morning right now, and you know, around this time, the cats wake me up. And then they keep me up for about an hour or two, so they wake me up to eat. And then from there, um, they, they're like kind of a little active. Even though they weren't too active this morning, they were more, uh, wanted to kind of just hang out. But anyway, it keeps me up for a while, so I was like, you know what, let me just do a little bit of art. And with this one, I would just flip to the section in the Bridgman book on drawing the head. So without further ado, let's look through it. Begin by drawing the head with straight lines, the general outline of the head. So, I'm just going to sketch along with these instructions. Now, it's interesting because there, there's no reference given. And I'm just kind of curious um, what he what he uses, what would the lead up to it. I had to jump ahead. Um, this is page 76 of the book. So, all right. Then draw the general direction of the neck from the center above the Adam's apple to the pit at the junction of the collarbones. I'll outline the neck, comparing its width and length to the head. Okay. So, he has, all right. This second head seems to be gesturing or looking in a different direction than this one where this one appears to be looking to the right. This one looks to be to the left. So let me, let me sketch that. This would be what the Adam's apple right in here. Neck. Neck, collarbone, collarbone, or sorry, shoulder. Let me reread this one. Okay, then draw the general direction of the neck from its center. So, what I believe that's saying is, since the head seems to be peering this way, the general direction from its center, so this would give us the idea just above the Adam's apple to the pit right here junction of the collarbones now outline the neck comparing its width and length to the head okay so he would have wanted us to put these marks in first put in the pit the collarbone put this in reference so that 
gives us the turn of the body and then this is connecting from it. That's interesting. If I understand correctly, what it's doing, it's giving us the, um, the line, the shape of what's going on. And then we kind of drape this over as if it's a cloth over the bone structure. I believe that's what he'd be referring to right there. Okay. Let's see the next one. Uh, draw a straight line through the length of the face, passing it through the root of the nose, which is between the eyes, and through the base of the nose, where the nose centers in the upper lip. So, this one is oriented in the same fashion, so I'm just going to resketch it, even though the only addition is just a line. So, on top of the head. So he wants you to sketch the outline of the head. So that's the first step. Second step, Adam's apple, collarbone, then connect the neck. This one has a tilt, it's out. Now, okay, so once again, draw a straight line through the length of the face. Passing it through the root of the nose, which is between the eyes, through the base of the nose, where the nose center is in the upper lip. Okay, so literally they just, they just wanted that line right there. So let's go on to the next. Draw the line from the base of the right ear at a right angle to the one you've just drawn. So ears seem to come out of nowhere right here. And when I say seem to come out of nowhere, it's just um, kind of didn't mention ears. So it's probably previously in the book. These ears should be a lot lower. Let's see. Let's um let's start another sketch. So we do right now. Out, down, in, chin. Okay, that's that vertical line. Ears. From the base of the ear at a right angle to the one you've just drawn. Okay, so here it'd be that. Okay. This nib, right, it's pretty good. I mean, I haven't really done too much with it, but that's pretty cool. Okay, on the line passing through the center of the face, Measure off the position of the eyes, mouth, and chin. A line drawn through this, these parallel lines. Okay, let's try this again. On the line passing through the center of the face, wham. Measure off the positions of the eyes, mouth, and chin. So, a line drawn through these will parallel a line drawn from the ear to ear, intersecting at right angles the line drawn through the vertical center of the face. Okay, so what this is saying is we mark them off and each of these lines will be parallel to each other. So it's just gonna be looking at that line and everything from there is going to be parallel. It's gonna have the same slope if you're a math person. So we mark off eyes, mouth, and chin. In this case, Seems like a lot more stuff than that gets marked off. You have the nose right here. So it looks like the bottom of the ear, nose lines up. Mouth, chin, eyes line up at the top of the ear. Have another line. I'm not sure if that's the eyebrows and then the forehead curvature. 
Okay, so let's let's write that out. Bottom of ear in line with nose. So then the top of the eyes in line with top of ears. And I'll put a little question mark because that just seems to be what we're coming with so far. Okay, <laughs> now there seems to be a lot going on. This is the last page within this section. With straight lines draw the boundaries of the forehead, its top and sides, and the upper border of the eye sockets. Then draw a line from each cheekbone at its widest part to the chin on the corresponding side at its highest and widest part. So I'm gonna do it more in this space right here since we're gonna have a lot of lines taking place. So we have the top of the head. So just doing that general outline that we've been doing. Right, we want the collarbone, sorry, not the collarbone, the um, Adam's apple area, collarbone, put in the neck, vertical line, we have the ears, we have this line right here, which is we said the bottom of the nose, we have the line here for the eyes, Line for the eyebrow, bridge, sorry, the forehead, lips, chin. Okay, so now let's add to this. The straight lines to draw the boundaries of the forehead, its top and sides. So here, the top, here's the sides. And the upper border of the eye sockets. That'd be the eyebrow, right? Yeah. Okay. Then draw a line from each cheekbone to its widest part. To the chin on the corresponding side at its highest and widest part. So chin here, and we have this line Coming through in that fashion. Okay, I think this is to start achieving planes of the face. He does have the nose sketched in here, which we had this at the bottom of the nose. Um, just a little line for the mouth. Anything else that we need to have added in? Nope, that looks to be about it. Okay. Now, we have quite a bit more to read. Um, I didn't mean to turn this into a video of me just reading to y'all, but more of just kind of exposing you to this book that's out there. Um, it's readily available on Amazon. I got this off of the Internet Archive, which um, has books that are usually out of copyright and all that. There's also um, downloadable versions of it on Amazon, so you can check that as well. But I'll just read through it and see if there's anything else we need to talk about. So if you if the head you are drawing is on the level with your eyes, the line you have just drawn, the lines you've just drawn, so the horizontal lines, meaning these guys, will intersect at right angles at the base of the nose. Hmm. If both ears are visible and the line of the ears extend across the head, it will touch the base of both ears. Okay, so that guy right there. Consider the head as a cube. The ears opposite each other on its sides or cheeks and the lines from ear to ear as a spit or skewer running through rather than around the head. If the head is above the eye level, so if you're looking up, or if the head is tilted back, the base of the nose uh, will be above this line from ear to ear. 
So if this person was tilted back, and they have a sketch down here, and I'll do a quick sketch of it. So I kind of do those loose sketches, but I'm trying to do it in the fashion that he has here. So here's the head normally. So tilted back would make it appear smaller. Here's that vertical line. The nose would be higher up here. The eyes would be up higher. The mouth would be here. But the ears, the bottom of them would fall lower. That's what that's saying. So if you have somebody tilting back or if you're looking up, it's gonna change that position. So if you're standing at the base of the sta statue of Michelangelo, no, Michelangelo's David, it would look like the ears would be lower in comparison if you're drawing that if the head is above eye level okay so we just did that and if you look down the same the opposite should happen so let's sketch that real quick and he has a more detailed sketch taking place here but if somebody's looking down where the eye level is going to be lower the nose is going to be lower the ears are going to be higher up. So here's just the nose. And here's that eye. And you see how it's just going to be lower in that case. So that um, is just the Bridgman section on drawing the head. There's a whole bunch more um, different perspective tilts. Um, it goes, I think, into detail with the eye. It goes into different detail with muscular structure, etc. We may eventually look at all that, but this is just to um, establish just a few little guidelines. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'll be back with more uh, videos and we'll continue to work with figure and portrait drawing and trying to relearn it. So I'll talk to you all soon and have a great day. Bye. -bye.